on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. Tonight on Piers Morgan Uncensored, they're the royal family of reality television. The Osbournes are headline-making Hellraisers. Tonight, the four of them, the big four, are live and uncensored. I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen, and nor do you. But I think we all know we won't want to miss it. Live from the News Building in London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. We're going to get to the Osbournes live from Hollywood shortly, but let's start with this. The word brawn evokes many powerful images. Greasy, muscle-bound men toiling in factories, soldiers on the march, Rocky Balboa, Schwarzenegger, Popeye, me, of course. It's also the name of a famous male grooming company which mostly sells very butch razors to men to chisel the hair from their big, manly, butch faces. They used to run advertisements like this. Braun System 123, advanced shaving technology. No other shaver has three positions for a really close, comfortable shave. Maximum performance with or without cord. Position one, shave superbly close. Position two, remove stubble, even in problem areas. Position three, precision trimming. Braun, the best-selling foil shavers in the world, now with a money-back guarantee this Christmas. It's enough to make you get excited about shaving, isn't it? Max power, optimal performance, precision engineering, everything I see when I look in the mirror. But there's a big problem here. Marketing executives at Braun have decided to take the legendary 90-year-old brand, screw it into a ball, chew it up, spit it out, and flush it down the loo. The latest ad looks like this. The ad features a man who used to be a woman proudly sporting scars from a surgical removal of their breasts. Well, various women's groups and a union of psychologists have complained that the advert glamorises a serious form of surgery, and they have a point. But the bigger point, surely here, once again, is why has a brand decided that alienating most of its customer base is a price worth paying for signalling its virtue? With the best will in the world, transgender men account for about 0.1% of the brawn customer base. 99.9% .9 of his customers are biological males, regular brawny old men who've never had their breasts removed. We've been down this road before. It's paved with good intentions, but it leads inevitably to bad results. Gillette, another staple of the male cabinet, lost billions after deciding to tell its customers, like me, that we were all Me Too predators, unless we could prove otherwise. Bud Light has lost $20 billion since partnering with trans activist Dylan Mulvaney after customers staged a mass boycott. It's no longer the biggest beer in America as a result. Maybelline faced a furious backlash for deciding to advertise women's makeup with these ironically brawny bearded blokes. Maybe those Maybelline men got lost on their way to the brawn photo shoot. Or maybe the people running major brands have just lost the plot. Brains over brawn, the saying goes. I've got another one. Brawn dead. Well, more on that in a moment with my special guests. They're one of the most famous families in the world. The family's antics, revealing their chaotic life and outrageous moments behind closed doors, became an international sensation when the show first aired on MTV 20 years ago. Sharon! Sharon! Get away from my freezer. Where is it? Stop screaming! No, Dad! If you get busted, I'll f***ing bust your ass, okay. What do you say? What do you say, buddy? I hate Jack. Oh, don't be stupid. Well, the Osbournes join me now. Well, most of them, because my old friend Sharon, of course, is still in makeup, which is the least surprising news of the millennium. But the three legends in front of me are there on time. The great Ozzy Osbourne, the great Jack Osbourne, the great Kelly Osbourne. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jack was the last one to get up this morning. Uh, can I just say that have you waited? It takes uh, forever to get ready. You know that, Piers. Well, Ozzy, having spent four years working with your wife on America's Got Talent, I'm very familiar with waiting for Sharon. I don't think she's been early in her life. 
<laughs> well, you have. And let's start with you, Ozzy, because I'm thrilled to have you on, on the show. We called this show Piers Morgan Uncensored. And when we named it that, I did actually think what would happen when we finally get Ozzy Osbourne live on the show, how committed to being uncensored could we be? So I need to get from you, Ozzy, a solemn promise that you're not going to get me banned from the airwaves. Are you promising you're not going to get him banned from the airwaves? Oh, no, no, no. I'll get you back. I won't get you banned. <laughs> just, just fine. Just a good old <laughs> finding. We're going to get through a whole lot of stuff uh, in the show tonight. But, Ozzy, let me start with you. Uh, how are you? You've been through all this health uh, well, hell. Well, I've, 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 I've finally had my last procedure two days ago. Uh... I can't believe it's, I've come to the end of it. I'm still back up. up uh, uh, the main thing is over now. I'm done with the surgery, but it's been five years of absolute hell for me and the family. My, my, fam my family have been so supportive to, to me. Uh, mm. I, could, uh, I couldn't have done it without them. It's been really a bad scene. I have Parkinson's, but I never think about it. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest misconception. It's like yeah. so many people think, you know, what's happened with Dad over the last five years is a result of, like, Parkinson's, but it's really... It was the neck injury and the fall that he took in 20... What, 19? So right, well, actually, I was going to yeah, talk about Parkinson's, this because, but... in fact, it goes back even further, doesn't it? We'll come to the Parkinson's in a moment, Ozzy, but if you go back, it actually goes back to when you had that horrendous quad bike crash in 2003. Quad bike? Yeah, yeah, well... Uh... I, I, did, I, I just got up and carried on, but I had a broken sort in my neck. Yeah. And I carried on working with it for until, until I had that fall. And then it just, everything came undone, you know. And then you get Parkinson's. And the state of the Parkinson's, I was listening to your podcast. <laughs> oh, blimey, you've got some tech issues there. But the, 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 the condition of your Parkinson's right now, Ozzy, from what you were saying in the podcast, is that... As long as you take the medication, it's pretty tolerable. Yeah, it's, it's, it, uh, I mean, I haven't got Parkinson's, the, the, the main one. I've got P, P, P2 or something, which is a genetic thing. Well, I, I don't know. It's, uh, look, I don't get up in the morning and go, I'm some, you know, I don't, I don't gripe on you. Just get on with it. If you're still, if you're still moving, you ain't going to be dead. I can't. Yeah. I think we've been, am, I, am I detecting a rustling there to your right, Jack, that your mother might have joined us? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, here, here, here we go. Sorry, it's me. Sorry, well, thank you. I'm late. You know thank you is, for maintaining it, your it, reputation for friend. always being late. I know, I know. Can't <laughs> help it. I had to do the washing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Sharon, how are you? Yes. I'm good, my darling. Missing you and missing England. Yeah, well, I, we're going to come to that, actually, and, you're, and whether you're going to come back here or not. But for, on, on Aussie's health, it's great to see the great man looking so well, actually. Um, but I know it's been a huge thing for you as a family that Aussie's been through this horrible stuff with his back, the Parkinson's, obviously, as well. And as a result, he's not been able to do what he loves most, and that's touring and you know, being a massive rock star. What's it be like for you, Sharon, as the matriarch of the family, to, to be through the last few years with Aussie like this? It's been, you know, I mean, so many people can relate, you know, who has a partner, whether it's the wife or the husband that's not well. It changes your whole life, you know. You suddenly, go, you're off in another direction and your life changes so drastically. Mm. It's... um. It's, it's really hard, especially in the summers, because, you know, the, every summer Aussie works and goes out and do festivals and, you know, we're travelling all over the world. And mm. for the last five years, we've been... Our life has changed, you know, dramatically. Mm. But on the other hand, it's great that I've had Ozzy at home for five years. He's driving me crazy. <laughs> but we've been together every day for five years. Well, you know what's funny? I mean, what viewers probably won't know, but when, when I did America's Got Talent with you for all those years, we would quite often have dinner. And, Kelly, I want to bring you in here because one of my favourite ever Osborne stories involved you, which was a dinner, I think it was in Miami. And it was me, your mum and dad, you and your boyfriend at the time, Luke, I think it was, 
And uh, anyway, you oh, you suddenly you announced that. halfway through <laughs> that you were effing bored uh, and that you were both leaving. You then departed from the, uh, the room, went out the back of the restaurant, and then you both dropped your trousers outside and moonied through the window at the three of us left behind, the boring old stooges. And all I could think was... <laughs> the Aussie and Sharon Osbourne are two of the most outrageous people I've ever met, and they've now been branded boring by their own flesh and blood. And the real outrageous <laughs> one in this family is that the, the torch had moved to you, Kelly. I, I do think that it didn't move to me. I grabbed it and <laughs> ran with it, much to my own self-demise. But well, it... I, it was a boring dinner, so I left and made it more fun on my way out. <laughs> it was not a boring dinner. We were all being very That's entertaining, albeit not for you. Oh, yeah, I remember that in Miami. Yeah. Uh, weren't we at the Viceroy? Yeah, I can't I remember, think it was. It was, it, was a, it was a fabulous dinner until <laughs> you two uh, mooned us. <laughs> All I remember is your parents' shocked faces as you two moonied through the window. And I found that one of the funniest <laughs> things I'd ever watched was the outrage from your parents at this behaviour. <laughs> Usually it's the other way around. Usually yeah. me and Jack who are outraged. Uh, Kelly, you're we're, looking we're great. Dying over the fact that our parents just said something. Thank you. Yeah, how's, how are you? How's your health? How's your life? I'm really good. My life is amazing. I'm a new mother and just every single day that I get to take care of my baby and be his mom is the greatest gift I've ever been given in my life. And you, you looked I love at, it. And you looked at a long life of turbulence with your rock star father and decided that you too would have to get together with a rock star. Well, when you think about it, it's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> And there must be um, something about the life. I mean, I always wanted to be a rock star, obviously. I'm a frustrated rock star already. But uh, it, it, there's probably a truth to that, isn't there? It's a world that you all know so well, right? So actually, whilst it may seem strange to other people on the outside to think, well, why would you get together with a rock star? To me, it was like, well, why wouldn't you? Because that's a world you know so well. It's... It's it's so true, and, you know. We become like like anything. You get your own little bubble, and you're surrounded by the people that you work with all the time. Yeah. So you know, it's it's very natural that that would happen. It's the same as me. If I'd have married um, an accountant or a lawyer, that would have been like, well, where did I find you? Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It yeah. just wouldn't seem right somehow. And, Jack, you're looking great. I know you've been clean a long time. Um, you've had your health issues, uh, multiple sclerosis, but you're looking extremely well. And you're taking part in various TV shows, which are sort of Iron Man stuff. Um, so how are you? Are you doing well? Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm totally... I'm hanging in there just fine. Like, it's, uh, you know, kind of similar to Dad. Like, I, it, as far as the MS goes, it's... You know, I kind of, most days I wake up and I kind of forget that it is a, a part of my life at this point. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'm not slowing down at all, which is great. You've also got four daughters. Now, the only other person I know with four daughters <laughs> is my, my recently retired army brother, Jeremy. He's got four girls. So I'm very familiar with the particular endurance test that you may be going through, Jack. Oh, Yeah. There's a lot of emotion in my household. <laughs> so much emotion. But it must be great fun. I mean, I was em slightly envying my brother. I've got three boys and a girl now. Um, but when I see my brother with his girls, they are all doting on their dad. I mean, you, you are going to get very lucky with all these girls taking care of you, I think. A absolutely. I love it. And, I, you know, and I, I, I think boys are great. They're fun, but they seem to break everything. And, you know, my girls just kind of want to hang out, have cuddles and, like, do cute things. And I'm... Totally fine with that. Now, Ozzy, you've been sitting there patiently listening to all this. The, the question I've got for you is, when you're now a grandfather to all these uh, kids, yeah. do you change nappies? I mean, are you a reformed... I know you didn't when you were a dad and no. early, but do you now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he runs for the hills. No. Not a single... Listen, if Ozzy had to change a diaper, it would end up on the head or something. <laughs> he wouldn't know what to do with it. But do you That's like being a granddad, Ozzy? I refuse to do. It's great. My, my, I love my grandchildren. 
Do you think you're a better grandfather? You. Are you a better grandfather than you were father, Ozzy, do you think? Not really. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Am I asking the wrong person no, I, here? I can I'm, see the others laughing. <laughs> no, I... No, he is an incredible grandfather and my little boy lights up every time. Yeah, I mean, I've got them. grandchildren in England and I don't see much, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you've got five. I've got five, five grandchildren five. in England. You've got ten grandkids. Wow. Don't, don't. Well, do you may get a chance to see them because you've been Hello. talking a lot as a family about coming back to the UK. Let's take a short break and when we come back, let's ask the big question. Are we getting you back? And if so, when? All right. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored, very uncensored, with the Osborne family over in Hollywood. Uh, Ozzy, I don't know if you know this, but today is a special anniversary in your career. It's the 43rd anniversary of the day you released Blizzard of Oz, your debut solo album. Wow. Yeah, Did wow. you know that? 43 years ago. 43 years ago, no, September the 20th, 1980. Wow, that's crazy. That's gone quickly, Bill. Don't tell me about it. That's how long we've been together, 43 years. No, a bit longer than the 43 years. Isn't that amazing, though? Absolutely crazy. amazing. Uh, yeah, it is. It... 
How does that make you feel, Ozzy? 43 years since Blizzard of Oz. Old. <laughs> Very old. <laughs> the, um... God. Uh, Sharon, I didn't ask you about your health because, you've, interestingly, you've been on this wonder drug, supposedly, Zempic, but you've now come off it. So what was it like? Did it work? And why did you stop? Um, you can't stay on it forever, firstly. Mm. I lost... Now I've lost over... I lost 42 pounds now, and it's just enough. I've... Mm. Um, Ozzy's having a go at me because he says I look like uh, Mrs. Reagan. So, um... <laughs> Nancy Reagan. Nancy. He calls me Nancy Reagan all the time. <laughs> so, um... It's just time to stop. I didn't actually want to go this thin, but it just happened, and I'll probably put it all on again soon. But what's it, what's it like it to be on? Life, I, mean, I, I, was in, uh, I was in America recently, and it just wall-to-wall -wall adverts for it on TV. Uh, everyone I know seems to be on this thing. What's it actually like, Zempic, to be on it? At, at first, I mean, you feel nauseous. You don't throw up physically, but you've mm. got that feeling. And it, I was about two, three weeks where I felt nauseous the whole mm. time. Mm. Uh, you get very thirsty and you don't want to eat. That's it. And that's why I keep saying you've got to keep this stuff away from uh, younger people from younger people because they will go berserk on it and it's, right. it's not right. I mean, do you think so ultimately... I, I really... I mean, having been through but it, yes, you, you, so you, you lost... What do you mean by the, younger people? You lost like the weight, children. but, I mean... I mean, Kelly, what did you think of your mum being on this? I think... I saw what it did for my mum's confidence and how, you know... I can only speak for myself. Food is an issue for me. It always has been. It always will be. And to see mum free of that for a brief amount of time to where you don't have to think about it because you don't think about it. Mm. And you make smarter choices because when you are hungry, you just eat what you have to to survive, mm. is what I, I witnessed with what mum yeah. went through. But seeing the confidence and seeing how good my mum feels in her body, I think it's totally worth it. I mean, Jack, as a but family... It, it's, um... I was going to ask Jack just generally. As a family, you've all had various addiction issues at various stages of your lives. What, why do you think that is? Uh, do you think you just have a particular addictive gene as a family? Uh, and how have you best learned yeah, to deal I with it? You've, you've certainly dealt with what you went through very, very successfully. Yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, addiction is very much a, a genetic kind of abnormality. Some people have it, some people don't. Uh, you know, personally speaking, it's something that showed up very early on in my life for me. Uh, you know, and, and for me, my solution was 12-step recovery. And it's mm. something that I have I've participated in for the going on 20 years. Mm. I take very seriously. And it doesn't just stop there. Like, I've I've had to go into other 12-step programs to deal with other things as they've come up. So, you know, it's uh, I'm a belief of, you know, once a cucumber becomes a pickle, it can never become a cucumber again. Right. <laughs> uh, Sharon, let's get to the big question I posed before we went to the break, which is, where are you guys going to live? Because there's been lots of speculation, I've talked to you about it myself, that you would come back to the UK, that you were yearning really to bring... Aussie home, as you put it, maybe lead village life. A lot of people raised quizzical eyebrows and went, really, Aussie Osborne in an English village? But that's where you guys came from originally. So where are you with this? Are you, you going to come home? Yes, we are. But it's, um, you know, with Aussie's issues, health issues, he's not been um, ready to leave this country and his doctors because of, you know, different things that are happening to him medically. Mm. And those are, you know, we feel we're in a good place right now. But we, we've had our house nearly 40 years. Yeah. And we haven't lived in it properly for over 20. So when you decide to go back in a house, um, you realise that everything's got to be changed. So we've done everything completely in our home and it's taking forever and in fact i got a very nice phone call yesterday telling us that they're digging up uh, all the area around the house because every pipe gas water everything needs redoing oh, that's, so it's all good fun that's the kind of call you really want isn't it <laughs> aussie how do you feel about coming yeah, back to britain perfect 
Well, I'm fine with telling people I'm going back because uh, next month it didn't happen. Next month it didn't happen. <laughs> so now I don't say anything because. I feel like an idiot, you know. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, Pierce. You don't, Jack? Why? I don't see it happening. Why? <laughs> oh. Well, I'm just, I'm the only one in the family that's like, this is a terrible idea, but that's just me. Why do you think it's a terrible gonna, idea? They're going to move back to, they're going to move back to Welders. They're going to be thousands of miles away from me, Kelly, all the grandkids. Uh, and I'm like, what are you guys going to do all day? Just like, wander around the house? I'm going to bake bread, cakes. <laughs> I'm going to grow my own vegetables. You're, you know what? I'm you're... working on my wokeness. I will be very busy. No, Pierce, <laughs> you're going to end up seeing my mother more than I'll see my mother. Well, I would like that. That's probably true. I would like that, because I love your mother, as you know, and I, I love being with her. So that would be... I would be a winner in as, this scenario. As long as... As long as there's no fist fights, it's good. We, yeah. don't, we don't fist fight anymore. Do you know what? Sharon hasn't tried to strangle me for at least, I would say, at least 12 years. Yeah. yeah and the last probably. time... The last yeah. time... Yeah, she, let's keep it that way. The last time she rang to apologise uh, when I was asleep in bed after the incident <laughs> uh, because Ozzy told her to. Because even Ozzy thought she'd gone too far... By he trying, did. ..by trying to kill me. Voice of reason. Yeah. He, he, is, actually, he is the voice of reason. It was actually a classic night where we met to, to discuss the fact we were going to work together on America's Got Talent, and the NBC executives were very excited about these two feisty Brits, and I was like, this may not go quite how you think, guys. And it took about three minutes of the dinner before Sharon was screaming abuse at me. I returned some volleys, and at that point, she got up and began to literally strangle me, and at which point, Jerry Springer, God bless him, the late, great Jerry Springer, who died earlier oh, this God year... God bless him. He was there as the host. He got up and led Sharon away. He became his own bodyguard, like the guys on his show. Uh, and it was only when Sharon got back to her hotel... The Aussie said, what happened? And he said, you're going to have to call him and apologise <laughs> for nearly killing him. And so Why? you did. And, uh, and that was that. It. And the next day we went to work, I like know. nothing had happened, and the, and the NBC execs were like, these Brits are completely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you two ended up like best friends. It's nuts. We did. I know. We did, and it was fantastic. Mm. Um, well, I mean, Ozzy, if you did come back to Britain, what, what are the things you've missed most about Britain? Uh, just the, the lifestyle. Uh, I like the cakes. I like... <laughs> <laughs> I like everything about it. I've got to warn you, Ozzy, I mean, yeah. whatever quaint idea you have about the state of Britain right now, it's in a pretty bad state. I mean, most people living here would prefer to go and live in... Beverly Hills, I can tell you that, because cost of living crisis is bad, the crime is really bad. You know, there's a lot of issues here that people are getting pretty fed up with. Even the rivers are leaking sewage. I'm, you know, I'm surprised you're choosing this particular oh. moment to come back, frankly. Well, it's not too dissimilar here. I was just about to say that. Like, right. crime is rampant, you know, we've got horrible fentanyl issues, there's thousands and thousands of people dying on the streets. It's... You know, I, I think, uh, you know, the, the upside to, you know, them moving back to England would be, you know, they have the land, they've got the space, they can kind of get left alone a little bit more out and, you know, mm. where the house is. So there's that, you know, I mean, dad, every time he steps set, you know, steps foot outside of the house to go to a doctor's appointment, there's some asshole photographer, like, waiting to snap a picture to right. be like, Aussie's moments away from death. And mm. it's like, Does... no, he's going to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Aussie... Uh, it's, I think everywhere. Sorry, Sharon. You were going to no, say, No, 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 I was just going to say everywhere, everywhere is bad. Everywhere. Yeah. You know, the cost of living everywhere is insane. There's so much violence. It's, you know, the world's crazy right now. I mean, the different thing I thought about LA, I've noticed the deterioration, was the just the brazenness of the crime. I mean, shootings in Beverly Hills. You know, a restaurant uh, in Cannon mm. Drive, I think, yeah. uh, in the middle of lunchtime. You know, there was a shootout as people tried to steal yeah. a watch and somebody got shot on a nearby table. Then a, uh, literally in the same street, and this is right in the middle of Genteel Beverly Hills, about six months later, a, a Lamborghini SUV outside another restaurant, which I go in a lot, they had a shootout there, someone trying to steal the Lamborghini. That didn't used to happen 10, 15 years ago in the middle of Beverly Hills. No, no, no. never. 
But but then you've got everybody going into stores. You'll get a gang of Smash 30, 20 kids go in together, you know, take, take everything. everything and go. Yeah. It's, and then they, if they get arrested, they're back on the street without any sort of bail or probation yeah. within minutes. And you see these mobs of people, particularly in California, it seems, steaming into the, into the big stores you know, some very high-end stores or just basic supermarkets and just stealing everything they can as a mob. And nothing seems to happen to them. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. because the laws are such that you, uh, you will go down. in, they'll, they'll, you know, mm. arrest you for five minutes and then you're back out on the streets. You don't need bail. There yeah. is no bail. We're going to take another short break. We're going to come back and talk about some of your neighbours in California, in Montecito. Because, Kelly, in particular, you gave some views on the podcast about Prince Harry, which made a few headlines, and we're going to be playing them back to you and hopefully expanding on the theme. That's after the break. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored, in New York City. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? He's mocked your weight, Trump. Yeah, look at him. Fail. <laughs> Not working. Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. You believe you can win this war? Are you making me cry again? They're trying to force you out. Yes, I feel betrayed. Keep it award winning. Mwah. Lucy Letby will die behind bars. And a senior doctor who first raised concerns about Letby wants NHS managers to be regulated. We needed answers a lot sooner. This is, what, seven years down the line? I mean, it's, it's completely ludicrous. We need accountability. We need performance in all walks of life. If this nurse had misgendered somebody on a board, she'd have been out the door. When they first got together, there were press stories. Weighty Katie. That would make her a better Princess of Wales. Ghislaine Maxwell agreed to be interviewed for the very first time. I honestly wish I'd never met him. Donald Trump has just said he expects to be arrested at 7.30 p.m. The Conservative Party can certainly win the next election. Can we? Uh, yes. Labour is 29 no, no, points no, no, ahead no, in the polls. No, no, can Come we? On. Did he say, yes, I have taken drugs and they bent the rules or lied on the visa application form and therefore got it? There needs to be an intervention around abortion laws. Parliament is sovereign. Mm. Parliament can determine these things. The rest of the world has watched on in sort of mounting horror as this story has unraveled. For you, it was incredibly personal. The death toll from the Titanic tragedy has risen to 1,522, and may God rest their souls. Let it roll! If we stop producing oil, the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off short. <laughs> <and this girl. laughs> oh, Get about Get and Mark. Some of them, they're easily led. You can kiss my American ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice of you. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. <laughs> We're now in Barbie world. You weren't asked to give evidence to the grand jury. I'm the only one that has been telling the truth. You don't drink, never taken drugs. Mm -mm. You're stinking rich. Should you be concerned? <laughs> <laughs> if it's on your mind, it's on Talk TV. It's about you and your opinions. If you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. It's all about me. That's a joke. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Sense. The Osbournes have been Hollywood royalty for decades. Uh, unlike the royal family, it hasn't stopped them voicing their opinions on them. Kelly took to a podcast recently to tell us exactly what she thought of Prince Harry. I think Harry's a <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think he's Rat. a I think he's a <laughs> he's a whining, whinging, complaining, woe is me. I'm the only one that's ever had mental problems. Like my life was so hard. Everybody's 
fucking life is hard. Yeah, you were true. the prince of That's a true. goddamn country who dressed up as a fucking Nazi, and now you're trying to come back as the Pope? Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what? They... I mean, I, I, mean, I couldn't wrong. have put it quite like that, but I definitely share the sentiment. Um, Sharon, when you heard Kelly well, there... I certainly you... have a way with words. Well, 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 Sharon, you've been slightly oh, more polite about them whilst making the same point. It was all very distasteful, Piers. I was totally bored by the whining, the whining, the whining. And, you know, the curtsy, the thing she said about medieval times, her lunch with the Queen was like medieval times, which, as you know, is a Disney-type um, entertainment place for kids. And it's just so horribly disrespectful and just a wine fest. So here we are. Um... It's quite interesting what's happened to them, isn't it? Because I lost my job because of Meghan Markle uh, over that Oprah interview. You, Sharon, then disgracefully lost yours on the talk because you basically said I was entitled to my opinion. Um, where are they now, these two? Because it seems to me that people have basically just got bored of them, which is the most lethal thing of all for any public figures. Who's going to go first? I'll go, go on. first. I just think the proof is in the pudding, in the sense you've been handed the world and every major contract, you had podcasts, you have all of this, and you didn't deliver because you... There, there's made, nothing to, to deliver. Yeah, because you don't have it. And that's, that's OK. And I think they do have a right to privacy, but that doesn't seem to me what they're looking for. And Ozzy, it, um, Ozzy, let me it, ask Ozzy, seems... actually, um, about Sharon getting <laughs> fired from the talk. Because I felt so angry about that, that Sharon would be forced well, out of a job that she was uh, brilliant... Because uh, 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 she was the star of that show. What did you I, make of it? I, I always said it was a setup. Yeah. Yeah. So... They were looking for an excuse to get her up. <laughs> well, yeah, and it was, uh, it, was a, it was the time when, like, what, what better excuse to kick someone off a show than, you know, start making wild allegations yeah. of like racism and it was just it was the it was like the the fad of the, of the moment to just you know burn someone down just to you know wave the woke flag and it was ridiculous yeah it, it was completely outrageous actually um i mean Ozzy, to hear people call sharon a racist knowing her as well as you do uh, how did you feel about was, that when, 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 when i first heard that you got uh, she's leaving the show. I, I, I said, well, Cheryl will stick up for her. She knows she's not a racist she's yeah. friend. And it was Sharon. Cheryl that threw her under the bus. She did. Yeah, yeah. She, she never it, said it, a word I think that's defense. the thing that was... No, and that was the thing that was so disappointing. It's like, you know, all these people that had worked with my mum for double-digit years, mm. knew the whole family, knew everything, not anyone came out and said, hey, actually, that's that's a pile of BS. And mm. and they everyone just went with it because, for one, people couldn't defend my mum because if you do defend, everyone then jumps on you. And it, it, was, it was just nuts. And, you know, Sharon, the interesting it's thing, a, isn't it? it? If you go back to the start of it, I had to lose my job on Good Morning Britain here in the UK because... I said I didn't believe a word Meghan Markle said. I wouldn't believe her if she wrote a weather report. Well, that's been completely vindicated by all the lies which have been exposed since, including stuff that was uh, lied about in the Oprah interview. So, actually, if you take that as the starting point, everything that followed was completely nuts. It, it just insanity, and then it seemed, you know, that, that everybody was parted. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Oh, I'm for them, I'm against them. And it's like... You know, they were given far too much importance mm. because what do they do? Yeah. Yes, well, well, look, Harry's all they do, done actually. Wonderful things with the games. He has done an amazing job yeah, with the, the games. Yeah, the Invictus Games is a very that good thing. Incredible. His service to his country was good. But the truth is, the only value they have to these corporations was to trash their families. Uh, all of them. And mm -hmm. I just it. don't believe anyone well, I can. I mean, be... just. I mean, you, guys are, you guys are such an extraordinarily strong family unit through thick and thin always have been. It's one of the things I love about you most. When you see people who 
who basically disown their entire families on both sides and then pretend they're happy. I don't see how people can be happy when they do that. No. No, no the, and the thing is, I've said this so many times, Piers, they're fine, but their children don't have any family. Yeah. No grandparents, no, no aunts, no uncles, no cousins. There's nothing. Nothing. Their, their babies have their mum and dad, and that is what is so terribly sad. Yeah. And they don't they know nothing of their heritage. Where but does this end, Sharon, yeah, for those two, do you think? I said it in the beginning in tears. It's it's going to end very, very badly. And I don't know why. It just keeps taking me back to Edward and, and Mrs Simpson. Yeah. It's like history repeating itself. Yeah. You know, and all of this, you know, cuddly, lovey, holding hands, going everywhere together. It's so disingenuous. It's like, come on. Give and us a break from all of that. Ozzy, having well, been through... Well, I'm going to talk to you, Ozzy, about love, because you have one of the greatest marriages for warts and all, good, bad and ugly, and you've had it all over the decades, but you have one of the greatest marriages I know because it's actually based at its heart on true love. And for you, what is it about that woman on the end of that sofa right now that's kept you sitting there and so in love with her for so long? I couldn't live without her. I've tried. I can't live without her. And she'll strangle him if he leaves. <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides, when I leave, I come back until my clothes are destroyed. Stop it, Ozzy. And Sharon, for you, what is the what is the secret of longevity in a marriage? Do you think? Uh, you have to realise that you can't change anybody, and it's acceptance. And, of course, the bottom line is love, but you accept each other, you know, as you are. You can't change anybody. Yeah. We're going to take a short they break. They have to change themselves. Yeah, I think that's right. And you evolve, you evolve as people, right? Uh, but I do think, when I look at the four you of do. you sitting there, and I remember, I think about all the scrapes you've been through collectively, individually, whatever. It's, it's great to see you guys sitting there as this fantastic family unit. You know, and all of you having come through difficult Thank times. You. Yeah, we're blessed. We really are. But on that note, I'm quitting the family and I'm moving to Montecito. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break. I want to come back and talk about some stuff in the news. Uh, Russell Brand, big scandal over in the UK. I want to get your take on that. Mm. Also, Donald Trump. Will he become president again? What, what do we feel about that? Oh. Um, so let's, let's oh, come yeah. back. And also, Ashton Kutcher, you uh, Sharon, you, you described again. Ashton Kutcher as the single worst celebrity you'd ever met. I want to find out why. So we'll come back after the break with those three <laughs> <Okay>. stories. <laughs>
Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Uh, the Osbournes are still with me, live from their home in Los Angeles. They've got a brilliant new podcast. It's basically the band have got back together. Uh, I've listened to the first couple of episodes. Absolutely brilliant, hilarious, sharp, outrageous, funny. All the things you'd expect from the Osbournes. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kelly. Jack. Sharon. And I'm the boss, Ozzy. Uh, yeah, Osborne Podcast. Uh, and we're back after a five-year hiatus. On the internet, conspiracy theorists are always talking about, ah, oh, there's sex, sex cults in, in LA. Have you ever been invited to a satanic sex cult? Never. I've never fucking seen one of you, Kelly. I've never even been invited to a sex party. Let alone- I need to go to a happier place. I feel romantic. Don't half Just go to bed, darling. <gasps> <Stop>. oh! <laughs> that right there was an invitation to a sex cult, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, scary. <laughs> um, let's talk about some stuff that's happening in the news. Uh, Russell Brand, obviously, you know, major celebrity figure on both sides of the pond for a long time, now accused of rape and sexual abuse in a big investigation by the Sunday Times and, and Channel 4 dispatches. Sharon, what do you make of this story? You know Russell Brand. Yeah, I... on, But I, you know, with... Look, being a woman, when I hear these, you know, cases where women have been abused and taken advantage of, I automatically go to, to the woman's side because I, I love women, I care about them, and so I'm already on the woman's side. But, you know, you want to know details, you want to know everything involved. Mm. The only thing I can say about Russell Brand is the two things that I don't like was when he... Um, spoke about uh one of them is a very good friend of ours um kimberly stewart, kimberly stewart yeah. about what he'd done to kimberly stewart in front of her father well i was there i was actually the there you know Sir bob gildoff well i was there oh you were well i was there when he oh. boasted about uh having slept with kimberly stewart and rod stewart was there and Rod Stewart, it was the GQ Awards 2006 and Rod Stewart went up on stage and absolutely took him down and he called him out and he yeah. said, you, you do not boast about something when you haven't done it. And Rod afterwards was telling me he was very pleased to have put him in his place. And he said, you know, it was really disgraceful. So I think with Russell Brand, there's always been a lot of embellishment as well as the boasting. Yeah, um, it's, and it's, um, you just don't do that to people's families when, you, when that father is in the room. He's done it twice now. And that's the thing that I, you know, sticks with me. But... This situation he's going through right now, I, you know, I don't know details, so I can't comment. I mean, Jack, it. it seems to me we've been through the Me Too times up. A lot of bad people have had their due come up, and some people were unfairly caught up in that and, you know, exonerated. Um, I do believe in due process for everyone in these situations. It seems to me that until you yeah. actually have the police look at this properly, it's unfair. I mean, at the moment, he's been cancelled left, right, and centre by everybody and everything and vilified and chained because everyone's assuming every word of the allegations are true, but they remain at the moment allegations. Yeah, and I was going to say just that, you know, it's, you know, we've all known Russell, you know, going on 20 years and, um, you know, you'd like to sit there and go like, no, that I don't, I don't see him, you know, he's done some vulgar, outrageous, crazy things, but you, you never want to assume that someone you know and is a friend or, you know, an acquaintance is, is capable of that, but you... You know, I, I'm. We got to see. You know, we saw it with the Danny Masterson situation. I mean, I I was a personal friend of Danny's. Like I yep. had been to his house. I'd played poker with him. I'd, you know, I I, I actually knew some of the, the victims. And so it that story was like, oh my god, like yeah. this is it, it. It's when when you know someone and then they get found guilty. It definitely shakes your foundation because you never know what happens no, behind it's closed true. doors. Um, Aussie, let me pivot to some uh, something else, which is. The American election coming next year could end up being Biden v Trump again. Biden, at the moment, looking extremely old and frail. Uh, Trump all pumped up, as he normally is, storming away with the Republican <laughs> nomination. Do you think we may see Donald Trump back in the White House? Um, unfortunately, yes. Uh, because, I mean, every, every time he gets arrested... Like, his, 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 his uh, popularity rises. Well, yeah, I was saying I last the, night. I think it, get, having him arrested and yeah, it's incredible. I mean, every having time having him arrested and the mugshots, it 
Well, it's funny it's, you, it's funny you mentioned more, more fuel. It's funny you mentioned mugshots because I did a bit of research, you'll be pleased to hear, before you guys came on. And I was trying to think, of, has there ever been a more iconic mugshot than Donald Trump's? And look what I found. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne in Memphis for, I think it was intoxication in a public place, Ozzy. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Did what do you, you think? pee on the police car? I peed on the police car. And said, <laughs> well, I, was, I was asleep in the, in the central divide on a freeway, pitch black. <laughs> and, the, and all these cars was in past, and I thought I need to take a pee. Not the best so idea. I felt around in the darkness. Oh, I felt God. around in the darkness, and there was a car there. I started to pee. And as soon as I did that, this blue light on the top flashed and says, your ass is going to jail. <laughs> and when you when you did the mugshot, Ozzy, what, what is it like to do a mugshot? Well, you stand there, you <laughs> fight some side. Can you even remember doing it? Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Sharon, I want to talk to oh, you. Oh, my Lord. Sharon, I want to talk to you about Ashton Kutcher because you were asked who's the rudest celebrity you've ever yeah. met and you suddenly said Ashton Kutcher, but you haven't explained why. So why? Um, he came on, on, the, on a show I was on, The Talk, and I had to introduce him. So I introduced him. And you know me, I'm terrible with names. And I didn't pronounce his name properly. So in the break... I apologised for not getting his name um, correct. Mm. And he turned around and he said to me, now, let's go back here because he'd known me for many years. Mm. I'd worked on his shows, the whole family had, when we were all at MTV at the same time. Yeah. And he looked at me and he goes, who are you? What even do you do? Wow. What's your thing? And so I looked at him and I just said, you know, you little shit. <laughs> and so after that, it just it just stayed with me. And, um, you know, as I said, he's a dastardly little man. <laughs> but it was funny, though, because mum made that comment. And then the next day it came out that he'd written the letters to the judge. And I think everyone thought it was because mum knew that. But yeah. you no, that I interview didn't. like no. weeks prior. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah, it just coincided at the same time, yeah. We're getting to the end of... It's been great to catch up with you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. Ozzy, people are going to ask, are you going to be able to tour again? What's your answer to that? Uh, I'd like to say yes, but I don't know at this point. How, how difficult has it been for you as one of the great rock stars this country has ever produced, certainly one of the great stage well, well, artists. How hard has it been not to be able to perform? Well, it's kind of... It's, it's the only thing I know what to do, really. Mm. I, you know, sometimes I can't live with it, and I can't, but at the same time, I can't live without it, you know. I miss the gigs, I miss the camaraderie, the laughs on the road, the audience especially. But um, if it's, if it's, if it's, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Well, say, I think, I, I think uh, let me do the I talking. Want... I just want to say that I, I think on behalf of everybody who loves music and loves proper rock stars, I think we would all absolutely love to see you back on that stage one more time. I know how much you've missed it. It must be so difficult. Uh, to have gone through what you've yeah, been through. Thank, but, Ozzy, I've got to say, there have been times in the last few years when I wasn't sure if I would see you for an interview like this again. And I'm just so... I feel so happy to see you there with your family, um, all together. Looking, thank you. I've got to say, you look great, mate. And I know you've been through hell. <laughs> but I'm thank delighted. You very much. I'm delighted the spinal stuff, it, it seems you, you come through that and the Parkinson's is under control. And you're looking good and it's great to see you. And it's, and it's great, Sharon, I think, for you to see your old man there looking alive and well and kicking well. You know it, Piers, you yeah. know it. I just wish last night we all got some sleep. Yeah, last night, by the way, our fire alarm went off five times during the night. <laughs> and, and the rest. And the rest, yeah. So we're all like, eh. Ugh, zombies what? today. Why do I get the feeling things are never calm and quiet in the Osborne family? 
Never. <laughs> never. 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 And now we've been joined by the never, only creatures... Ever, ever. The only creatures madder than their owners are, are these dogs. But uh, I remember the one that you had on America's Got Talent. <laughs> the, was it Minnie, the dog on AGT? Minnie, What a yes, fabulous... Yes. But she was like Sharon, small but very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> small and mighty. Guys, we've run out of time. Thank you, all of you. Jack, Kelly, Sharon, Ozzy. Great yes, to see you. you. And I hope to they see you in the you. flesh soon. You take care. Thank you very much. Whatever. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? He's mocked your weight, Trump. Yeah, look at him. Fail. <laughs> Stop working. Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. Do you believe you can win this war? Is he making me cry again? They're trying to force you out. Yes, I feel betrayed. Keep it award winning. Mwah. Lucy Letby will die behind bars. And a senior doctor who first raised concerns about Letby wants NHS managers to be regulated. We needed answers a lot sooner. This is, what, seven years down the line? I mean, it's, it's completely ludicrous. We need accountability. We need performance in all walks of life. If this nurse had misgendered somebody on a board, she'd have been out the door. When they first got together, there were press stories. Weighty Katie. That would make her a better Princess of Wales. Ghislaine Maxwell agreed to be interviewed for the very first time. I obviously wish I'd never met him. Donald Trump has just said he expects to be arrested at 7.30 p.m. The Conservative Party can certainly win the next election. Can we? Uh, yes. Labour absolutely. 29 no, no, points no, no, ahead no, no. in the polls. No, no, no. Can Come we? On. Did he say, yes, I have taken drugs and they bent the rules or lied on the visa application form and therefore got it? There needs to be an intervention around abortion laws. Parliament is sovereign. Mm. Parliament can determine these things. The rest of the world has watched on in sort of mounting horror as this story has unravelled. For you, it was incredibly personal. The death toll from the Titanic tragedy has risen to 1,522, and may God rest their souls. Let it roll! Yahoo! Yeah!